You have known me under many names, but right now, you know me as... Oh my God! That is Malachi Black! Ever since I was young, I loved martial arts. And it turned out in the world of professional wrestling, I wasn't the only one. Join me as I throw hands with some of your favorite professional wrestlers from around the world and find out why they share this affinity for the sport. Today, we got former Ring of Honor former NOAA Japan, former New Japan, former WWE NXT, and current AEW wrestler, Bobby Fish. Now, Bobby Fish, in my opinion, is one of the most influential wrestlers of the modern era. His ability to translate martial arts technique into professional wrestling is second to none. I uh, always had a lot of respect for Bobby. I really enjoy his work as a professional wrestler, as an entertainer, whatever you will. Um, it's bound to be a sweat box session because it's 75 here in Florida, and so the heat's coming into the tiny space that we're training here, but it's bound to be a good one. Let's go throw some hands with uh, Bobby Fish. I'm dead. We've been uh, severely sweating here at Kissimmee Muay Thai with uh, the one and only Bobby Fish. Uh, it Bobby, it is very, very warm in Florida weather. And even like, what, it's it's December, what is it? It's, it's ha somewhere halfway through December um, and it's still 75 outside. So like the humidity is still there, but to be honest, I kind of like it. That's yeah. my kind of training. However, uh, we're here with Bobby, and Bobby is going to demonstrate us one of his favorite techniques, and he's going to explain to us why it's his favorite technique and what is his reasoning behind uh, the way he moves and the way he, and why he chooses this combination. Mm. Okay, so the combination I'm going to throw it starts with uh, a right hand. We uh, follow that up with uh, a liver shot or a hook to the body, and then finishing with a rear leg round kick. Okay. Um, 
known within kickboxing circles as the Hoost, named uh, by for Ernesto Hoost, because it is one of his go-to combinations, and it's just right hand hook to the body, rear leg round kick. So I'm about to get beat up by one of the famous Dutch legends of kickboxing, um, which is ironic, obviously, that I'm about to be on the receiving <laughs> end of this thing. Uh, but hey, here goes nothing. All right, so Bobby's gonna break it out for All us. Right. slowly getting into it. So I'm throwing that right hand, I'm throwing that hook to the body, and then I'm gonna crush Push. with that rear leg round kick. And the reason why I really love this combination, which, to continue with the irony, is Ernesto Hoos is a longer, rangier fighter. However, this combination works really well for a shorter fighter like myself. Um, I have to keep moving forward. If, if Tommy and I are fighting and I let him use his range, I'm never gonna get close enough to make any contact with him. So I've gotta close that distance and what I found is that I can walk forward with the combination. So I don't have to stay back here at a distance. I can walk forward and land the combination, which is gonna then, it's up to me to keep my range and work the body or anything else inside as opposed to getting back here where now I'm stuck at the end of his jab, the end of his kicks, etc., etc. So one more time, the hoost, right hand, body, rear leg round kick. One more time for good measure. Yes, sir. Even through my glove, with as minimal power as Bob is using, I can feel it right through that quad coming in on the backside of that hamstring. It's not a pleasant feeling. So. Thank you, Bobby. We're gonna Thank go you. sit down and we're gonna have a, a discussion about this all. Let's go. Sitting here with uh, the one, the only, Ring of Honor, Noah Japan, New Japan, NXT, WWE, and now AEW, well, wrestling veteran, uh, <laughs> Bobby Fish. Yeah, that's the polite the polite name for well, it. I figured I would give you all your acolytes, <laughs> minus all the belts that you've won over all the many years of your uh, in-ring competition. Uh, but, you know, listing all the, you know. Bullshit. No <laughs> all the bullshit. All the notorious stuff that you've done over a, uh, well, like, I, I want to say over a 25-year career. No, so oh, um, I always lose track of it, but I, I think I'm into like 20 something. 21, 22, because right. I started a little bit late. Um, sure. Age-wise, I think I was 25 when I had my first match. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and you're 27 now, right? Yeah, yes. I'm 27 and a half now. <laughs> yep, I'll be, uh, I'll be 28 soon. Oh, <laughs> but all jokes aside, uh, Bobby Fish, one of the most respected uh, veterans of the modern day professional wrestling. You have done it all, you've seen it all, you've been everywhere. But what for me always stood out is actually the same reason why I asked you to do this, is you are in a line of individuals like myself that has incorporated martial arts and translated it to the lens of professional wrestling. Now you were into martial arts from a young age, right? Yes sir. On, even back in high school, were there any other sports that you did and that you were, you know, you were, you were good at, but like, were you from, were you, were you a very sports person? Were you in mm -hmm. football? Like, yeah. Like, what, yep. what, what was that background like? Um, I started Taekwondo when I was eight. I started uh, football when I was nine. Right. Um, I played football all the way up through uh, my senior year of college. Um, I played lacrosse in high school. I was uh, just all about the contact sports, like, mm -hmm. uh, I rammed my head into things and other people for the majority of my life. Um, and then you switched to martial arts. And then I, <laughs> and then I switched to pro wrestling to, yeah. to give my head a break. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, no, I, it was always contact sports for me. I, I don't know what it was. Like I, I played baseball like a lot of other American children. And uh, I, you know, I mean, I'm not, I won't tiptoe around, I sucked. I was awful at baseball. Um, for some reason, I was afraid of getting hit by the, the ball. Mm -hmm but I was not afraid of another human being hitting me. 
So like I took to martial arts and football immediately and then um, in grade school I started lacrosse and that was mm -hmm. another one that it was just like a continuation because it was contact sports. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I never shied away from contact with another person for some reason. And then in my teenage years I started kickboxing because uh, you know, karate and I, I, Taekwondo, like I said, um, but I started doing like freestyle karate and it just got mm -hmm. to be more contact and um, I guess I chased the, the contact any place I could find it. You and I have not known each other very, very, very long mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the perspective of the, of, of the amount of years that we both spend in wrestling, sure. realistically four or five years at most. Mm -hmm. And one of the first times we ever met is when we wrestled NXT. We met yeah. each other prior Maybe not even a handful of times, maybe yeah. once or twice. And you know, we and we wrestled NXT for the first time. Was Germany the first? Perhaps. Was yes. That? Yes. I think yeah, that I think was the first one. The and first, that was that yeah. was that was also when we literally had maybe ten minutes yeah. to kind of yeah. get our heads into it yeah, and yeah. then going yeah. out there and yeah. doing it. Um, it's funny that you bring that up because yeah. I actually didn't remember that until you just said it. And I was like, uh, Yes, yes, yeah. yeah that well, was we one, both yeah. get hit in the head a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um I always think that you know, from 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 my perspective, you are one of the guys that really took the martial arts and created such a beautiful way of translating certain combinations, certain moves, and and weaving it into the pro wrestling aspect. What makes what makes for you? What makes something good for you in terms of like martial arts? You're like, hey, this is something I can I can translate. When does that click for you? Um, well, first off, I really appreciate the compliment because that's it's. If there's one thing I would like for people to notice about the style of pro wrestling that I do, because we all bring our own True. uniqueness to it, um, is that. And so, you know, when somebody mentions something like that, uh, it you know it, it lets me know like okay, I'm I'm getting my point across at least a little bit. Um, I think. There's a ton of trial and error, and I think uh, you have to have, it's like, um, and, and you have a, a similar mix of this where it's, it's got to be the right amount of legitimate martial mm -hmm. arts yes. skill. Yes. It's got to be the right amount of legitimate pro wrestling experience or repetitions, and if either one is not in balance, things get a little wonky. You brought up uh, Kyle earlier when we were talking. I think Kyle is another one who's got a really Flawless. fantastic blend yeah. of knowing enough of each. Yeah. Uh, because there are certain martial arts techniques that just simply don't fit into pro wrestling in the way that we do it. No, not in the original state. Sure. You have to dilute them, cut them up, and then rebuild them, basically. Yeah, yeah. And, and to be honest, to get into the nuances of it, it would be lost on, on a lot of people. Um, there would be some who, who do this, who, who within our profession would probably understand it. Um, I think it's part of why you, you get a fair amount of guys that um, come over to pro wrestling from MMA mm -hmm. and they don't quite make the transition mm -hmm. because they have, they lean too much on the martial arts yes. and they don't understand Agreed. enough of the pro wrestling Agreed. where I think, like I said, there's that, that, that right mix mm -hmm. of the two and it allows you to be able to do something that's eye pleasing because at the end of the day, what we do, you know, it, it, it you know, you, you're trying to, make it um, appear to be this thing. Yeah, you know? the, the, uh, the, yeah, the, 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 the pro wrestling flavor sure. of martial arts, sure. basically. And I think right. some people too, like conversely, I think there are, there are a lot of people within our industry who uh, I'll call, I always call it like faking the funk. You know, they, they've not put the reps in and yet they go out there and they try to do these techniques that some martial artists, yeah. uh, kickboxers, mixed martial Agreed. artists, whomever, like they spend their lives perfecting yep. these techniques and yep. you think you're gonna watch it and go, oh, well, I'm a decent athlete, like I can do that. And then I don't, to me, and now granted, I may have a more educated eye when I watch it, but like when I see somebody who's totally faking the funk, yeah. man, it's like nails on a chalkboard. I mean, no, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. It and really rubs me the wrong way. I also feel <laughs> that with the influx of the popularity of martial arts, sure. uh, you know, that how, how it is right now, especially in the last 15 years, you see a lot of young, sometimes very gifted 
uh, young wrestlers yeah. that try to like do them, but they they don't have the background. And right. I always use the example whenever I I, I, I teach young wrestlers. So like, well, you know, you can take a football gimmick and you can put the helmet on, and you can put the shoulder pads on, and you can stand like this. Right. But if you've never actually practiced right. football, right. you can't really convey yeah. no. what it is that you need to do because football requires a ton of footwork. It requires yeah. a ton of technique. It's a mindset. The yeah. same way as there needs to be a blueprint in your brain as to how footwork works for martial arts and how right. you throw a high kick and how you roll into a, a heel walker or knee bar. And, sure. you know, so I, I, I completely understand where you're coming from. Hey guys, my name's Simon Harrison, head coach at Kissimmee Muay Thai. I'm here today with Malachi Black, and we're just gonna go through a real simple technique that we use with beginners, just to show them how to combine the hands and the feet together. So I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna throw a jab and a cross, just to get his hands up. From there, I'm gonna throw the hook, which is gonna push all his weight onto this side, and then I've got my target. I can kick the leg, or I can come up and kick the body for a bigger score. So again, just to show you that a little bit quicker, it's a jab, cross, hook to get the hands up and finishing on the kick. Show you that from the other side as well. It's the jab, cross to get the hands up. The hook is gonna push all his weight. That's gonna stop him from being able to lift up and block. And from there, I can go with the kick. So one more time, a little bit quicker. Or I can go down to the leg. You and I have, I'd, I'd say you and I have always had some pretty deep conversations. Yeah. Uh, I think you and I in the locker room that despite how different we are in our belief systems, I think you and I have a shared um, set for engaging in conversations that both make us think. Your athlete's mind mm -hmm. and your mind as a human being, those are two mm -hmm. separate things, mm -hmm. but they collide a lot of the times, right? Sure. How do you feel, how do you separate the two? How do you go from, okay, right now this is where my switch goes and I need to like, you know, cut into me being an athlete and uh, right now I can't, I, I can't let either this come into me or uh, the pressure of like daily life things or like, you know, how, how, how does your athlete mind, minds work? And we had this, I had this conversation with Marina and she gave her example of like, she uses a lot of um, where she comes from and how she feels emotionally as she translates that into professional wrestling, which mm -hmm. is something that I understand because I feel a lot of us do that. A lot mm -hmm. of us weave our childhood Mm -hmm. traumas or current traumas, mm -hmm. things that we find interesting or things that like speak to us and that inter interweave into our athlete's mind. Mm -hmm. Where is the balance for you with that? Um, I think in my younger years, I was able to kind of uh, on switch and off switch it. You know, when it came to sports, whether it was football or kickboxing or uh, even professional wrestling in, in the uh, younger years doing it, like when it was go time or the red light was on or whatever, like I was able to kind of tune everything else out. Mm -hmm. um, as I've gotten older um, and I've just realized the need for balance in, in life, period. Yeah. Like yeah. you can't, you know, that, that it, and it does work from a success standpoint to the on light or the on and off switch. Um, you can be relatively successful with that, but I feel like as I've gotten older, like, you know, there's certain parts of my personal um, life and the, and the real me that um, I need to keep, um, present yeah. so even when i'm going out there uh to wrestle or if i were to go out and in, in, in an athletic competition at this point in my life like um i feel like i i would be more apt to bring some of the real me uh out there with me and not be such um not be such a like cyborg um which it, it's pro wrestling I think having done a, a good amount of, of sport and then pro wrestling, I think pro wrestling, like you've got to have a little bit of a mix of both where mm -hmm. when it's sport uh, completely, um, cyborg, I don't know, always worked really well for me. 
Where with pro wrestling, like I don't think we can be, no, you know, to you, convey the emotion yeah, you're boring. Training the emotion. You're boring yeah. if you're the, yeah. the cyborg. So it's uh, really, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm understanding the delicate nuances of it now. You know, some 20, uh, 20 odd years in in this business, like I'm starting. To but get that's that. how long it takes, though. <laughs> yeah, it really does. I mean, I when it comes to martial arts, it comes to pro wrestling or anything, I, I, I think there's only so much expediting of the process that you can do. Mm -hmm. There's a certain amount of repetition required in order to, you know, to make your body appear like it's not doing it for the first time mm -hmm. when it's out there doing it for the first time. Like, you know, there's just reps. There's no substitute for reps. I get that. Yeah. I, I, I feel that. Mm -hmm. So, in your own words, what has martial arts given you? Oh, geez. I mean, I... I'll say, I've said it before, but like I can go off in a corner and shadow box um, and just find like almost a meditative state mm -hmm. in it. Um, if, if I'm really focused on, on technique, uh, that's one way to get there. But then sometimes when it's muscle memory that's there and you're able to just kind of go through the motions, that's a way to get there too. Um, and I, I feel like, uh, if it weren't for you know for martial arts, I wouldn't. Because I, 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 if I go off into a corner and do it, like I don't give a shit who ends up watching me or whatever. Because mm -hmm. like, um, I, and I'm a big tick, uh, stickler for technique and whatnot. But like, I'll put my technique out there because I know that I the repetitions are there. Like it's right. something I train. It's not I'm not faking the funk so to speak. And um, I feel like martial arts is something I'll do until I'm 80 some odd years old, or you know until I'm. I'm dead like I think it's a life lifelong pursuit you know I thought kickboxing like when I was doing some amateur stuff um, well would I even want to spar or anything if I wasn't if I didn't have a fight coming up and like I the answer is yeah I still would like a little bit I mean I'm not I don't need to get hit in the head any more than I already do at this point in my life but I don't know there's something about martial arts it's if it's in you it's in you and I got it. I think it's a great way to uh, end our little sit down and our little session with Bobby here at Kissimmee Muay Thai. Uh, Bobby, thank you so much for no, taking the time you, out of your man. day and, uh, yeah. you know, showing us uh, how it's done yeah, technique-wise break and yes, sir. break a little sweat. I appreciate you. And, I appreciate uh, you. You can catch Bobby Thanks, Fish sir. on AW, whether that is on Rampage or on Dynamites, Wednesdays and Fridays on TV.